so far, story has not really been that much of a thing in the 2D Sonic games. You know, some of them tried to have a little bit of story here and there with just, like, minor amounts of in-game cutscenes and all that. But we haven't really gotten real proper storytelling in a 2D Sonic game prior to Sonic Rush. But this game now endeavors to break that trend, as Sonic Rush actually tries to tell more of a legitimate story here, with actual cutscenes and dialogue and such. Of course, as this is a handheld game, it definitely doesn't have the production value you would see in the console 3D Sonic games, and so the story is pretty much entirely told with these visual novel sequences, and if you watch my Sonic Battle Story video, then I complimented that game for having really good, engaging visual novel sequences that seem to cut above the typical VN sequences you see in a lot of games that are kind of just used as the cheap way to tell your story. And unfortunately, Sonic Rush falls victim to the exact thing I was talking about. This is that kind of cheap, not super engaging way of doing visual novel sequences. All the style, all the polish, all the nice things that they did in Sonic Battles cutscenes are pretty much gone here, replaced with just very simple and fairly unappealing pre-rendered art of the 3D models, and it just doesn't get the same kind of engagement that the Sonic Battle VN sequences did. Very unfortunate, but it is what it is. We just gotta make do with what we have. And it's especially unfortunate because Sonic Rush actually does have a fairly good story, and it deserves to be told better than how it is. Oh well. One other thing before we get into things is that Sonic Rush also decides to adopt the storytelling structure that you see typical of the 3D Sonic games, in that it has two stories being told at the same time that we see from different perspectives. We have Sonic's story and Blaze's story. I don't know why, but this storytelling structure really became a staple of the Sonic series for a very long time. You could even say it's iconic to the Sonic series at this point, even though in some cases I would argue it actually ends up harming the story more than it helps it. Anyway, now getting into things, we're gonna start off with Sonic's story, and Sonic Rush actually starts with nothing to go off of at all. It doesn't have, like, an opening cutscene or anything like that, you just go straight into gameplay. So, we don't really know what's going on at this current moment, but I feel like I can probably take a guess that Eggman is up to no good and Sonic is going to stop him, right? That seems like a safe bet. And in fact, that is exactly correct, as Sonic runs into Eggman, who says that he is going to obtain some ultimate power. And of course, despite not knowing what Eggman is up to, Sonic is going to try to stop him. Sonic defeats Eggman here, who makes his getaway, and he leaves a mysterious-looking gem behind. Sonic goes to investigate, but then... Whoa, who is this? New character, and she's got fire powers. Now that is an introduction. I mean, yeah, obviously we all know now, and honestly anyone who bought this game would know who Blaze is already because she was super marketed all over the place. But still, Sonic Rush is the introduction of Blaze into the Sonic series, so it's important to mention this stuff. This is the proper first time we should be seeing Blaze the Cat. I already did cover Sonic 06, and she was present in that game, but that's a little bit of a situation. We're gonna talk about that toward the end of the video. Anyway, in the context of the story right now, we have this mysterious new character teasing that she's up to something, collecting these gems here. Don't exactly know what these are. These aren't Chaos Emeralds. Ooh, what's going on? After this little encounter, Sonic meets up with Tails and fills him in on the situation, and they decide to go pursue Eggman. And they do eventually catch up to Eggman, but Eggman seems a little bit different. He looks different, and also he is going on about how Sonic is not addressing him by his full title, which obviously that's confusing, what the hell are you talking about? And then he introduces himself as Dr. Eggman Nega. After defeating this Eggman Nega, then he makes his escape, and Sonic and Tails discuss what the hell is going on. This Eggman Nega character, if he's not just Eggman in some disguise, then that means that there's two Eggmans now? And it's a little bit weird how they discuss this, because they just talk about how, like, oh, he looks just like Eggman. I mean, motherfuckers, it's a little bit more than he looks just like Eggman. 
he just straight up is another Eggman, but they don't really acknowledge that, which is odd. But either way, it can't be a good thing, and Tails is still very worried about what Eggman mentioned with some ultimate power, and he wants to stop at his workshop to investigate something. And upon doing so, Tails learns that the space-time continuum has a tear in it that is expanding. Obviously, that's not a good thing, and Tails and Sonic are wondering if that's Eggman's doing, or it has something to do with Eggman Nega and this mysterious cat girl. Side note, there's a little bit of an error in here where Sonic says a line of dialogue that's clearly supposed to be coming out of Tails' mouth. Whoops. Anyway, Sonic and Tails continue to pursue Eggman Nega, but they realize that this isn't really getting them anywhere, so they decide to try to hunt down that cat girl character and try to see if they can get some answers from her. And lucky for them, they were right by Cream's house, where they run into Cream's mother, Vanilla. Oh my god, Vanilla exists again. Take it in, people, because this is the last Sonic game she's ever going to appear in. Vanilla informs Sonic and Tails that they just miss Cream as she is out with her new friend, some girl wearing a bunch of purple. How convenient for our heroes, as that sounds like exactly the person they're looking for. And they ask Vanilla which way they went, and they start their pursuit. On the way, Sonic and Tails run into Knuckles, who has somehow found himself buried under a pile of rocks. They ask him how he wound up there, and he says it's because of some girl that was tagging along with Cream, who obviously is the person they're looking for. So Sonic and Tails are on the right trail. And following this trail, they do eventually manage to find Blaze and Cream. But before we get to there, why don't we rewind a little bit and start to talk about Blaze's story? So Blaze's story begins with her unconscious, and she wakes up with no idea of where she is. And she immediately shows great concern for something called the Soul Emerald, saying that the world will be in danger without them. She recalls that a mustached old man took the Soul Emeralds, and she followed after him where then she was engulfed by a white light, and ended up where she is. Blaze theorizes that this might be a different dimension than the one she's from, which seems like a very random guess to me, like what would make you possibly think that's the case? I don't know, but that's what she comes to. But regardless, she needs to quickly recover the Soul Emeralds, and she heads out. Eventually, Blaze manages to track down Dr. Eggman, who is surprised that she managed to follow him all the way into this world. And here Eggman used the phrase, this world, confirms to her that yes, she is in fact in a different dimension. Lucky guess on her part, it's almost like the writers just had her conveniently already know what was going on or something. Anyway, Blaze demands Eggman return the soul emeralds to her, who simply just taunts her with, Oh, you mean these things? Sorry, but I need them for the ultimate power, the thing that Eggman mentioned earlier. And so naturally, if he's not going to give them back, then Blaze is going to have to take the soul emeralds back by force. So Blaze manages to recover the first of the Soul Emeralds, but she's gonna have to track down Eggman again to get the rest of them. Which proves for her to be a bit of a problem, as she is not familiar with this world, she has no idea where the hell she is. And just as she's thinking that, she notices something moving in the bushes nearby. And that something turns out to be Cream watching Blaze from afar, but once she's found out, she gets out of the bush and properly introduces herself to Blaze, giving her a nice traditional Japanese bow as she did to Sonic when they first met. And Cream immediately asks if Blaze would like to be her friend, which is something that catches Blaze off guard. In fact, Blaze is completely thrown through a loop with how polite and nice that Cream is being to her. Cream definitely seems to have a bit of a fascination with Blaze in this game, not too unlike the fascination with Sonic that Tails had when they first met. I wonder if that's supposed to be a parallel of some kind, hmm. Anyway, after Blaze is made a bit uncomfortable by this whole situation, she finally does introduce herself to Cream, and immediately Cream invites Blaze over to her home, and Blaze is like, what, well, uh, but I, I actually have to go do something, I can't really. But Cream ends up dragging her along anyway, you know, Blaze is held captive by her own politeness. Cream is just too nice and too cute for you to possibly say no to her. Upon getting to Cream's home, she introduces her mom to her new friend that she just made, Blaze, and Blaze is like, uh, we're friends? I mean, uh, we just kinda met and, uh, duh, duh. Of course, despite being a Cream's home, Jimmeral and Chocola are nowhere to be seen, as those characters no longer exist because continuity is not a thing in the Sonic series. Anyway, Blaze is like, uh, um, uh, I have to go. I have an errand that I need to run. Sorry for the intrusion and all that. 
But then Vanilla shuts the door behind her and says, Oh, please, I insist, have some tea with us before you go. And once again, a slave to her own politeness, Blaze complies. While they have tea, Blaze explains her situation to them, but really she's just wondering why she's wasting her time here when she should be out looking for the Soul Emeralds. Upon hearing her story, Vanilla suggests that she ask Sonic for help, as, you know, who better to handle this kind of situation than Sonic? But Blaze replies that there's no need for that, she can handle this whole thing by herself. But Vanilla replies, nah, nah, don't be like that, Sonic will be glad to help. Here, Cream will show you the way. And Blaze once again tries to insist that, no, she's fine, she can do it by herself. But then Cream comes in and says that Blaze is her friend, and as long as one of her friends needs help, she's gonna try to do what she can to help them out. And Blaze at this point is just like, alright, fine. I need help finding my way around anyway, so at least she'll be useful. So Blaze begrudgingly complies, which Cream is very happy about. This is now where Sonic and Blaze's first meeting took place. Blaze thanks Sonic for taking care of Eggman for her, but she doesn't actually know that this is Sonic. This is just some random guy to her, as no one has explained what Sonic looks like. And all she cares about is that she's managed to get another Soul Emerald, so Blaze heads off to try to find the rest. While looking around, Cream is asking Blaze if, oh, would you like to go visit the flower garden? You know, she's trying to have fun with her new friend. But Blaze is flat out like, no, I'm not here to go sightseeing. I have to recover the soul emeralds. Blaze thinks to herself that with the soul emeralds not being in their proper dimension, her world is in danger. And in fact, she's already started to feel the effects of the soul emeralds starting to impact this dimension as well. And she finds it strange that no one in this world seems to be concerned about this situation. And right on cue, Cream excited runs into Knuckles. By the way, where is Knuckles? Why is he here? Why is he not on Angel Island? Don't worry about it. Angel Island doesn't exist for this story because continuity does not exist in the Sonic series. Anyway, Cream wants to introduce Knuckles to her new friend Blaze, and Blaze is just like, Jesus Christ, I feel like a goddamn babysitter here. She has been keeping me from getting lost, but once I get all the Soul Emeralds, I'm gonna ditch this kid. Anyway, Cream introduces Blaze and Knuckles to each other, and things are going okay at first, until Knuckles starts to think that Blaze seems a bit suspicious. Knuckles seems to sense the power of the Soul Emeralds and mistakes them for the Chaos Emeralds. To which Blaze is like, Chaos Emeralds? What the hell are those? Does this dimension have its own equivalent to the Soul Emeralds? And at this point, you get a pretty clear idea of what's going on with this whole situation, right? We got Blaze, she's from another dimension, they have the Soul Emeralds, and we have this Eggman Nega character that's like an alternate Eggman. We have a tear in the space-time continuum it is pretty obvious to figure out at this point. Anyway, Knuckles tells Blaze that she should give the Chaos Emeralds to Sonic for safekeeping, and Blaze is like, once again, people are mentioning this Sonic person, what's the deal with this guy? And she tells Knuckles that she doesn't have the Chaos Emeralds, which he doesn't believe, and he goes so far as to attack Blaze in this situation, but she manages to dodge his hits, which causes Knuckles to slam into a bunch of rocks that end up falling on top of him. This is how he ended up in that situation when Sonic and Tails ran into him. Blaze and Cream leave Knuckles buried under all the rocks, and Blaze is left thinking to herself that the Soul Emeralds are of critical importance. And obviously at this point, it's pretty easy to see that Blaze definitely takes things very, very seriously. She's not like Sonic is, where she's all free going about things. And obviously, as you can tell, she's very much like a leave it to me, it's my responsibility kind of person. Which doesn't really gel with, you know, the Sonic cast and their power of friendship and all that. In fact, as they continue along, Cream is going like, oh, we still haven't found Sonic yet, and Blaze is like, I've already managed to collect a bunch of the Soul Emeralds on my own, I don't need Sonic's help. And this conversation about Sonic catches the attention of one Amy Rose, who is, of course, looking for Sonic, as she is wont to do. Blaze is annoyed that once again she's run into someone that's going on and on about Sonic all the time. Cream introduces Blaze and Amy to each other, and in this game, Amy is once again in full-on obsessed with Sonic fangirl mode. She immediately tells Blaze that you can't have Sonic, I'm his girlfriend, and whatever. And Blaze bluntly responds that she really couldn't care any less about this Sonic person. And Blaze thinks to herself that this girl is really open about her emotions, which is something that Blaze is not allowed to do. Ho ho, perhaps a bit of alluding to maybe there's a reason that Blaze is so standoffish to everyone else? Ooh, let's see where this goes. Amy is like, all right, that's enough talking. I gotta go back to looking for Sonic. And Cream is like, Blaze, let's follow Amy, because Amy has Sonic radar, so wherever she goes, they'll be able to find Sonic. You know, making light of the fact that Amy always manages to run into Sonic wherever she goes. 
turning a plot contrivance into a bit of a joke and, like, something that we can actually acknowledge as part of Amy's characterization. How seriously we're supposed to take this kind of thing, I can't really say, but considering that Amy is in full-on joke character mode at this point, I'm just gonna treat it like that. Though you can't deny that whenever Amy is looking for Sonic in these games, she always manages to find him. That is a little bit more than just coincidence at that point. I mean, realistically, it's just contrived writing. Anyone is able to find Sonic if they want to in these fucking games. But in the case of Amy, they actually decide to address it in some kind of way. So, you know, it's something worth acknowledging, I guess. And upon hearing this whole thing about Sonic Radar from Cream, Blaze actually is amused by this and cracks a smile, which Cream is happy to see see, as Blaze has always been so stern in their time together, it's nice to see her finally smiling. And this gets Blaze all flustered and all that, but they gotta go follow Amy to find Sonic. And find Sonic, they managed to do. This is back where we were in the Sonic story. Sonic and Tails have been looking for Blaze, and Blaze and Cream have been looking for Sonic, and now they finally meet here. Blaze thinks to herself, oh, that guy that I met before was Sonic. Tails tells Cream to get away from Blaze, as he thinks that she might be partially responsible for the tear in the space-time continuum. Of course, from Cream's perspective, she has no idea what he's talking about. And Sonic asks Blaze if she knows anything about Eggman Nega, and Blaze thinks to herself, Eggman Nega, he's come to this world as well, implying that Eggman Nega is also from Blaze's dimension. In the same way that the Soul Emeralds are the equivalent to the Chaos Emeralds, he is her dimension's equivalent of Eggman. Blaze tells Sonic that it's none of his business and that she'll take care of it by herself, and Sonic's like, hey there, that's not how things work around here. Tails asks if she knows anything about the tear in the space-time continuum, and Blaze is just surprised that anyone even knows about that. And she reaffirms that this is her problem and she's going to take care of it, and Blaze runs off and Cream chases after her. And Cream asks Blaze, now that they finally found Sonic, why didn't she ask Sonic for help with this whole thing? And now after hearing everything everyone said about Sonic and finally meeting him, Blaze is a bit curious, so she asks Cream what kind of person Sonic is, to which she responds... Now ain't that just the most fitting thing in the world? I love that moment. Meanwhile, Sonic and Tails decide to chase after Blaze, as they can obviously tell that something is going on. Remember, Sonic and Tails still don't know about this whole alternate dimension stuff and even who Eggman Nega is. But they know something is going on, and obviously they're not just gonna sit around and do nothing about it. In their pursuit of Blaze, Sonic and Tails run into Amy, who has finally managed to find Sonic. And Sonic and Amy do their typical routine, but then eventually Sonic asks if Amy has seen Eggman or Blaze around anywhere. And Amy gets all pissed and jealous, like, what would Sonic want looking for some girl? Because, you know, obviously we're using comedic Amy here, which honestly I do kind of find funny, so I'm okay with it. Anyway, Tails calms Amy down by explaining to her the situation, and then Amy's like, okay, yeah, I saw her go that way. So, assumedly, Blaze and Cream ran past Amy on their way. And in fact, they run into Amy again, who manages to find them. How the fuck she finds Blaze before Sonic does, I have no idea, but she does. I guess it's just more of that radar of hers or whatever, right? Anyway, she tells Blaze and Cream that Sonic and Tails are looking for them, and Blaze is like, I don't need Sonic's help, I can take care of this by myself. This is something that has been pretty aggressively hammered into us by this point in the story, but for good reason. Even Amy is like, boy, you're stubborn. You know, it's okay to rely on your friends for help every now and then, right? And Blaze is caught up on that word, friends, you know, implying that uh, she doesn't really have many friends. And Amy does the whole spiel of sometimes you can't do things alone, sometimes you need your friends, and even if you can do it by yourself, then it's better with friends. Jesus, what is this, a sequel to Sonic Heroes? Not that I'm complaining, I think this actually works pretty well for this story. And in this moment, upon hearing Amy's words, Blaze has a bit of a reaction to that. And then Cream comes in saying that a friend of a friend is also a friend, and so since Sonic and Amy are her friends, that means that Sonic and Amy are also Blaze's friends. Which Blaze thinks to herself that that doesn't really seem right, but at the same time, it doesn't feel wrong to think that way either. This is the start of Blaze's change here a little bit. Amy is telling her that, hey, now that you have friends, you don't have to tackle everything by yourself. 
And just as Blaze is starting to understand these things, then Knuckles shows up of like, all right, cat girl, it's payback time. As you know, Knuckles is still pissed for Blaze burying him under those rocks, even though technically that was his fault for getting angry for no reason. And Amy's like, geez, what happened? And Cream's like, Knuckles had a bit of a misunderstanding. And Amy's like, oh yeah, that sounds like Knuckles. All right, you two go, I'll take care of him. And Blaze is kind of surprised by this, but you know, Amy is just acting upon what she just said. They're friends, and Blaze can rely on her, so leave this to her. Hey, look at that. Even though Amy is still kind of Sonic-obsessed fangirl, she gets to have a little bit of character outside of just the fact that she likes Sonic. And it's the proper use of Amy's character, where her nice, kind, pure-hearted self kind of ends up influencing others in positive ways. Definitely nice to see that again. So while Amy chews out Knuckles, Cream flies Blaze away. To which Blaze actually thanks Cream. Hey, how about that? Blaze actually taking help from someone for a change. And then Cream replies that Blaze doesn't need to thank her, they're friends after all. Now ain't that just adorable? And upon hearing Cream refer to them as friends, Blaze smiles and she thinks that she's never had these kinds of feelings before. All these interactions that she's had with Cream and Vanilla, Knuckles, Amy, Sonic and Tails, it's all slowly been thawing that cold exterior that Blaze projects all the time. A bit ironic that someone with fire powers is a bit of an ice queen. But as we'll find later in the story, there is a good reason for Blaze being the way that she is. So much so that even though that Blaze is starting to go through a bit of a change here, it's not that easy to change your nature as a person, as we'll see in the next scene, where Blaze confronts Eggman to try to take the last Soul Emerald from him, but then Sonic shows up. Or in the alternate version of this scene, Sonic is confronting Eggman Nega, and then Blaze shows up, and here we get a bit of Blaze's relationship with Eggman Nega, and we see that it's very similar to Sonic's relationship with Eggman. Presumably, Blaze has defeated Eggman Nega multiple times in her own world. And Nega explains that he brought Eggman to their dimension so he could take the Soul Emeralds and get this whole thing started, and that he really doesn't care what happens to their world without the Soul Emeralds. And you know, since these two scenes kind of happen at the same time a bit in parallel, I think that what's actually supposed to be happening here is kind of an amalgamation of both, where both Sonic and Blaze are confronting both Eggman and Nega at the same time. And once again, Blaze is telling him to leave this to her, she can handle this by herself. And Sonic is like, not happening, I have some business with Eggman too. And then Blaze starts yelling, no, I need to do this myself, this is my duty, I have to protect my world, I don't need anyone's help. And at this point, I'm left to wonder if Blaze is yelling at Sonic here, or herself. And Sonic is like, whoa, you need to chill there for a second, calm down. But Blaze is so upset and so insistent that Sonic leave this to just her, that she decides to fight him herself. Blaze's insistence that she has to do this on her own, that this is her responsibility, it is such a strong belief that she has that it's causing her to lash out to people that don't mean her any harm. These new things she's coming to feel about Cream and being able to rely on friends and having friends, this is all so foreign to the life that Blaze has lived up to this point, and she doesn't know how to handle these kinds of emotions. The duty to protect the Soul Emeralds is so drilled into her that she struggles to understand much else beyond that. And like how anyone does, when you are confronted with something unfamiliar, then it can be scary, and so people default back to the things that they've believed their entire life. So here, Blaze is kind of repressing these new feelings that she's had just to go back to what's familiar and what's comfortable to her, which is the way she's been living this whole time. She is forcibly keeping herself from embracing these new feelings. While physically she is fighting with Sonic in this situation, mentally, internally, she's fighting with herself. And this is a situation where Sonic is being very well used as a character here, as he is acting, of course, as Blaze's voice of reason. Blaze is upset in this situation, and she's lashing out to someone that's trying to help her because she's afraid of these new things she's feeling. She doesn't want to feel these new things, she just wants to go back to how she was before. But unfortunately for her, the person that she is trying to lash out at is the being that represents all that is good, all that is right. Sonic, by the very nature of his character, he helps people through problems, he brings joy to people, he inspires people, 
This is just what he does, and this is exactly what Blaze needs in this situation, because while maybe in her life in her own dimension, Blaze could handle anything that she ever ran into by herself, in this situation, she is unable to handle this problem right here, because she can't beat Sonic. And that is because, in this situation, she is wrong, and he is right. And by defeating her here, Sonic is helping Blaze to realize that. This is why I really like the story of Sonic Rush and Blaze as a character. It's, you know, fairly on the nose and in your face and very simplistic, sure, but it's a simple story that is not too intrusive on just this being a fun video game, yet at the same time, it has that kind of heart to it that you want out of Sonic, where it's not just a fun adventure for the sake of video game fun adventure, but there's an arc here, a character learns a lesson, they grow, they change. There's actually a message to take from this game beyond just the fact that Sonic beat Eggman again. However, while that's resolved and Blaze managed to recover the last Soul Emerald, there is still the issue of the two dimensions that are now colliding with each other as Blaze's dimension has been led by the Soul Emeralds to this dimension, causing the two to start mixing together, and most likely two dimensions cannot exactly coexist on top of each other, so this is quite a problem. Naturally, our heroes come to the conclusion that this whole thing was orchestrated by Eggman and Eggman Nega, so they have to go deal with those two. Unfortunately, it turns out that Eggman has kidnapped Cream and is demanding that Blaze come to a location and give him the Soul Emeralds if she wants her back. And Eggman specifically says that Blaze has to come alone. And Sonic and Tails are like, no, it's too dangerous, everyone can go together and then we'll take care of it. But Blaze says no, she has to do this by herself. Not because of her stubborn duty, but this time because she has to go save her friend. And Sonic sees the change in Blaze, this is not the same situation as it was before, and he agrees with her. Tails is worried if Blaze will be okay by herself, but Sonic has this to say in response. Again, it's on the nose and in your face, but I kind of love how this story is going. Besides, while Blaze takes care of Eggman, Sonic and Tails have to go take care of Eggman Nega. And as far as Sonic's side of the story, there's not a whole lot here. They just defeat Eggman Nega, and then we end on the gag of Amy chasing after Sonic, and he's like, Oh, gotta go, guys. See you later. It's like the exact same ending of Team Sonic and Sonic Heroes. The real ending to talk about here is Blaze's ending, and I'm just gonna let it play out because, I mean, it's so freaking good. Remember at the beginning of the story when Blaze was all like, who the heck is this girl? Just some freaking rabbit following me around. This is annoying. This is like babysitting. I gotta go find the Soul Emeralds. I don't have time for this. Well, uh, this scene shows us just how much Blaze has changed. Sonic Rush really is Blaze's story. Like, if you just play through Sonic's story in this game, then there's, like, barely anything here. It's just, like, Eggman is up to something, there's some cat girl running around, there's another Eggman running around, and we defeat him and save the day. There's, like, nothing to it. Blaze's story is where all of the meat of everything really is here in Sonic Rush. Which, again, that also kind of became a very common thing that you see in the story of many Sonic games, where Sonic's story is very, like, whatever, and all the other character stories are the ones that have the real meat to them. Again, a very weird way of doing things, but I guess in this situation, it works pretty well. However, the story is not over just yet. 
Because similar to many Sonic games of this time, Sonic Rush also features a last story that you can play once you complete both of the character stories and get all of the Chaos and Soul Emeralds. And the last story starts up with Blaze wondering, okay, we've defeated the Eggmans, we've stopped the two worlds from colliding with each other, but there's still the issue of how do I get back home and how do we return things to normal? While the rift between the two worlds is no longer growing, it's still there, so we have to do something about that. And this is when Eggman and Eggman Nega show up to basically explain their plan. Basically, they say that Sonic's world and Blaze's world are linked together. They are not just two random dimensions of many, these two dimensions exist in counterpart with each other, and the Chaos Emeralds and the Soul Emeralds act almost like the magnetic poles of this shared world. And they describe that in close proximity, the Chaos and Soul Emeralds have the ability to attract and repel one another, and when this happens, that produces an immense amount of energy that Eggman and Eggman Nega want to take advantage of to take over both worlds. And they get a surprise attack on Blaze that gives them the opportunity to steal the power from the Soul Emeralds. What they find strange, however, is that with the Soul Emeralds here and the Chaos Emeralds here, why isn't there that reaction that's supposed to be creating an immense amount of power? And Eggman figures that that can only be because Sonic is holding the Chaos Emeralds right now. So, with their robot powered by the Soul Emeralds, Eggman and Eggman Nega taunt Sonic to come on, bring it, we can take you out. But first, Sonic goes to check on Blaze to see how she's doing, and she apologizes to Sonic for letting them get the power of the Soul Emeralds. And she's even like, look, the Soul Emeralds, they've just become rocks, they're nothing now, they don't have any power left. But of course, Sonic knows how the Chaos Emeralds work, and the Soul Emeralds probably work similarly. The power from the Soul Emeralds might have been drained, but that doesn't mean that they are done for good. All you need is the right thing to give them power again. Pretty cheesy there, literally saying the power of friendship, but you know what? The scene was good, so I'm totally fine with it. In fact, personally, that whole power of friendship shit is a total guilty pleasure for me. I always fucking go for that. I love that shit. So this is more than A-OK -okay by me. And so then Super Sonic and Burning Blaze work together to defeat both Eggman and Eggman Nega. And they manage to do so, which leaves just the final cutscene of the game, where Sonic and Blaze are talking to each other, saying that this is it, everything is going to go back to normal, and Sonic and Blaze are going to go back to their own worlds with their own sets of emeralds. It's too dangerous for the Chaos Emeralds and the Soul Emeralds to exist in the same dimension together, so Blaze has to go. Sonic says that Cream is really going to miss Blaze and asks if she has any words for her, but Blaze says that she doesn't. She came to this world as a stranger out of nowhere, so it's best that she leaves the same way. Blaze leaves Sonic with one final thank you for all of his help. But before Blaze leaves, Sonic has one final thing to say. Though we don't actually get to hear what it is, we just hear the end bit of it. I'll see you again. This isn't goodbye. Sonic and Blaze, despite the fact that they're going back to their own dimensions, Sonic is confident that they're going to see each other again. And Blaze is like, yeah. You're right. We will see each other again one day. And then we have the true final farewell where Sonic and Blaze approach each other and they're looking into each other's eyes and you're like, KISS! But no, they actually just give each other a handshake. But then that handshake starts to get torn apart as the two dimensions start separating from each other once again. And Sonic and Blaze are both holding on as tight as they can, but then eventually they do get separated from each other, and oh no, the star-crossed lovers being pulled apart. I mean, obviously, I'm just joking here. I don't do the whole Sonic shipping thing, but that last moment really felt like it was gonna go in that direction there. 
And then we finish things off with Blaze flying back in her world, and she's thinking things over and everything that happened. It's because of Blaze's fire powers, and it's because she is the princess that she has the duty to protect the soul emeralds of her world. By the way, this is the first time they mention that Blaze is a princess right at the very end of the game. That's a little bit weird, but whatever. And so there's an implication here that due to her fire powers that she was born with, she is given this responsibility of guarding the soul emeralds, you know, soul, the sun, fire, and all that. And then that, combined with the fact that she is a princess and there's a lot of duty and responsibility that comes along with that, it forced Blaze into this mentality where she had so much responsibility and duty placed upon her that she thought that she had to do all this stuff herself. You know, she's the guardian of the soul emeralds. She's the one with the fire powers. She has to protect them. And that is how she developed this mentality of thinking that she has to push people out and do everything by herself. But thanks to the adventure she just went on and the interactions she had with Cream and Sonic and everyone else, she now sees the error of her ways, and in fact sees that the mentality she had actually put her world in greater danger than if she had just accepted help from the very beginning. And it's all thanks to that annoying blue rat we all know as Sonic the Hedgehog. And now we get to hear what Sonic had to say to Blaze in that last moment that we didn't get to hear before. That line is just so perfectly Sonic, I absolutely love it. And then after that, Sonic explained to Blaze that the reason that there wasn't that strong reaction of power when the Soul Emeralds and Chaos Emeralds were right next to each other is because they were being possessed by people that could control the power of the Emeralds. You know, Sonic knows this just because he's Sonic, I guess, in this scene. Whatever, I'm fine with it. The point is that as long as someone is there that knows how to wield the Emeralds, they won't go out of control. Obviously, Sonic has that ability, but now Blaze also has it as well, thanks to the fact that she's learned to open up to others. And Blaze has this moment where, upon thinking back to everything, she realizes that Sonic knew it all along. That motherfucker, he was right from the very beginning, and he helped me realize that. And there's an implication here that Blaze now sees what's so special about Sonic that everyone was talking about. And then we get one final little scene of Cream crying as she has to say goodbye to Blaze. But then Sonic comes and tells her that, you know, you're gonna see Blaze again one day. Which of course cheers Cream up, and now they eagerly look forward to the day where they can eventually see Blaze again. And that is the story of Sonic Rush. To be honest, this is one of my favorite Sonic stories in the entire series. Like, I think that this just does everything right. I mean, obviously the story presentation isn't the strongest, but this does pretty much the exact kind of thing that I want the Sonic series to be doing. You know, I like the stories of games like SA2 and Shadow the Hedgehog and all that plenty, but I also do feel that those games are too focused on story and have way too much going on and are way overly complicated and, you know, things like that. I don't think that Sonic necessarily needs to have those giant, epic, crazy stories all the time. I would much prefer Sonic to have smaller, more character-focused stories that are fun and enjoyable but not too overbearing, and Sonic Rush delivers exactly that. And because of that, I would say that it utilizes a lot of the characters much better than most other Sonic games do, especially Sonic himself. Not saying he's poorly utilized in games like SA2 necessarily, I think he's really well used there as well, but this is a simple and effective story that gets to the heart of what Sonic really is as a series, as a character. It's said multiple times in Sonic's character bios that he is not a hero. He does not think of himself as a hero. He just is who he is and he does what he wants. And it's due to Sonic's nature as a force for good that what he wants to do is to make things better for everyone else. And so he works perfectly as a catalyst for change and growth in other characters. Sonic brings positive change to Blaze just by being who he is. And you can see this exact same thing reflected in a lot of the best Sonic stories. This is when Sonic is really fully being utilized properly as a character, and I absolutely love it. 
Blaze as a character as well. I really like that she has an arc, she has growth, and it's fairly effectively done. Cream works wonderfully as the character breaking through the hard shell that Blaze has built up around herself. And all the side characters, Tails, Amy, and Knuckles, you know, there's some fun interactions there, but they all serve to add to that feeling of Blaze starting to understand what it is to have friends. Everything here is just so well done, and it works so well, and honestly, maybe this is a little bit of personal bias here, because I have my own personal share of past experiences with, uh, building up a shell and pushing others away. Where do you think the name Pariah comes from? But I have since conquered those demons. But naturally, stories that deal with that kind of topic are ones that are really going to resonate with me. As someone that has been in the kind of position that blazes in at the beginning of the story, let me tell you, at least in my experience, when a person is pushing others away, there is nothing more that person wants than for someone to break through all the walls they're putting up and reach out to them anyway. And the fact that Cream and Sonic managed to do that for Blaze in this story, it's just wonderful. And again, yeah, this whole theme is pretty simplistic, but I think that works for Sonic. You know, you gotta remember that this is supposed to be a series for kids, so you don't want to have stories that are too overly complicated. The game does a good job of establishing who Blaze is as a character and what her personality is like, and then slowly chipping away at that and starting to get you to see the person underneath. And then, you know, she goes through that whole change and all that, and it's very effectively done. Nothing here feels forced or too fast or out of place or anything. While it might not be as ambitious as the stories that you see in the console Sonic games of this time, it doesn't have major giant problems and plot holes and issues all over the place. The story here just works. And I can definitely appreciate a decent little story that is being effectively told. Again, this whole thing is pretty on the nose in the way that it's executed, but the ultimate theme, the ultimate message that the story is trying to say, that even when you feel like you're all by yourself, you do have people that you can rely on. There are people that are there for you. That is a real positive message that I can tell you from first-hand experience, some people need to hear that. It is a little overly slight in my opinion, like I said, Sonic's story doesn't really have a whole lot going on. And overall, there's not like a ton going on here, but you know, you could argue that works pretty well to keep the pacing of the game up pretty nicely. But there are other problems here, like for example, I feel that the actual gameplay is completely detached from the story in a way that's not very good. For example, one of the zones in this game has you going on an aircraft carrier straight up SA2 style with gun robots as the enemies in that zone, but there's no actual, like, story justification for why you're being attacked by gun or why you're busting through one of their bases or whatever. It's just a level in a video game and it has nothing to do with the story. That could have been done a little bit better, I think. Another thing I would like to touch on with the story of this game is that I find the whole situation here very amusing because I have to wonder how this whole premise came to be. Because, you know, we have the two dimensions, the Chaos Dimension with the Chaos Emeralds and the Soul Dimension with the Soul Emeralds. And, you know, they're obviously counterparts to each other. And we have Eggman and Eggman Nega, and Sonic and Blaze are also kind of treated as counterparts. In fact, during development, Blaze was described as being the alternate dimension counterpart to Sonic. And, you know, with her being a rival to Sonic, because that's another thing that became a thing in the Sonic series, is Sonic has all these rivals that are like him. First we had Metal Sonic, then Knuckles, then Shadow, and now we have Blaze. So this whole game's premise is built on this idea of the alternate dimension, the other version of the Sonic universe, intersecting with this universe. And I just have to go, where did this whole idea even spring from? And you know what I think it is? You know what I actually think was the inspiring factor for this entire game? I legitimately think it was simply the fact that the DS has two screens. You know, it's so perfect. It makes all the sense in the world. We got two dimensions, two sets of emeralds, two Eggmans, two Superforms, two Sonics, and two screens. Ah, oh, it just writes itself. And I just find that hilarious that the entirety of Sonic Rush was possibly inspired simply by the fact that the DS has two screens. If it wasn't for that, then we might not have ever gotten Sonic Rush. 
Another thing I find very weird about this whole setup here is that with the two dimensions supposed to be like counterparts of each other, you know, you have Blaze as the alternative version of Sonic, but she's not just like evil Sonic or alternate Sonic or Sonic in another version. While she is his counterpart, she is also a very different character. She is not just not Sonic, she is her own individual. And I like that, but then at the same time you have Eggman Nega, who is literally just an alternate version of Eggman. I mean, his name is fucking Eggman Nega, as in negative, as in the Eggman we know is the positive, as in they are, you know, reflections, counterparts of each other. But then, even then, Eggman Nega isn't like the inversion of Eggman, he's basically the exact same character, but he looks different. Unlike Blaze, who despite being the alternate universe version of Sonic, is actually her own character, Eggman Nega is literally just alternate Eggman. I mean, even the fact that his name is Eggman Nega, that Nega, that suffix, it denotes that he is the offshoot, that he is the variant of the original, which really doesn't make any fucking sense at all, because, like, from his perspective, he is the original, and the Eggman we know is the alternate one. But because he has the name Nega, it, like, automatically establishes him as derivative of the original. Without Eggman, Eggman Nega is nothing. He is not his own character. Honestly, I think Eggman Nega is really fucking stupid. A better way to go about this would have been to do the exact same thing for Eggman that they did for Blaze. Don't just make another Eggman, but make another character that could be Eggman's counterpart in Blaze's world. I think that would work much better and be more fitting of this whole setup here with Sonic and Blaze, but, you know, it is what it is. One last thing before I go that now needs to be addressed is Blaze's existence in Sonic 06, of course. Because now that we've seen the story of Sonic Rush, there's a little bit of inconsistency with how Blaze is portrayed in Sonic 06. Oh my god, a continuity error in Sonic? Who would have fucking ever seen that coming? Because this game, which came out first, established Blaze as from a different dimension, the alternate universe version of Sonic. But then in Sonic 06, without any explanation, Blaze is now living in the future with Silver in the same dimension as the one Sonic lives in. So what the fuck is going on there? I'll tell you what's going on. Retcons. Retcons is what's going on. Now, a lot of people say that there actually is a way that this whole thing can make sense, and it has to do with the ending of Silver's story, where after Blaze seals Iblis inside of her, then she tells Silver to seal her into a different dimension. And so people go with this idea that 06 takes place first, and Blaze is from the future, but during the events of that game, she travels to the Soul Dimension. However, I really do not think this is the case. I don't buy this at all. I don't think this is what's supposed to be happening here. Because, first of all, I think you're giving Sonic Team way too much fucking credit that they actually planned all this shit out. I mean, this is the same developer that was incapable of having Shadow being written consistently across Sonic Battle and the other Sonic games being made at the time. And there's also the fact that they just completely forget and dismiss the fact that Knuckles is the guardian of the Master Emerald, yeah, whenever they feel like it, depending on the game. While yes, Sonic Rush and 06 were in development at the same time, I do not at all think that there was some sort of multi-game spanning plan thought out with this character and what her story was going to be. Especially considering that she was made for Sonic Rush, and then after the fact, she was put in Sonic 06. And there are a couple of things that point to this being the case in Sonic 06 that make it make even less fucking sense, because in that game, Blaze has this moment where when Silver describes that he saw in the vision from the Chaos Emerald that it was a blue hedgehog that caused the disaster of the future, then Blaze is like, huh, blue hedgehog? 
why the heck would she have that reaction if not the fact that she was already familiar with a blue hedgehog? In fact, she says this multiple times later in the story where she's thinking about that, huh, blue hedgehog, as if she's contemplating whether or not it's possible that the blue hedgehog she knows could cause the ruined future that she lives in. Why on earth would this be here if not for the fact that Blaze already is supposed to know who Sonic is? Now, you can try to explain this away because the specific word that Blaze uses is Aoi in Japanese, which can also mean naive. Naive, and in fact, she calls Silver naive by calling him Aoi a couple of times throughout the story. That's kind of like a running thing between the two, Blaze calling Silver naive. And so potentially there's supposed to be an implication here that she's not saying that the blue hedgehog is going to cause the destruction of the future, but the naive hedgehog is going to do it, as in Silver is going to do it, by killing Sonic. The problem with this and why it doesn't work is that Blaze is not who we hear the origin of the Blue Hedgehog. Silver is the first one to mention this. He says Aoi when he's referring to the Blue Hedgehog after seeing the vision. So obviously he's not thinking of this with the foresight of the naive hedgehog as himself because he is literally seeing a Blue Hedgehog. So his use of the word Aoi here is supposed to mean blue, which means that Blaze's use of the word is also so referring to the same thing. So somehow Blaze is already supposed to be familiar with the Blue Hedgehog in the story of Sonic 06, which would mean that this would have to take place sometime after Rush where somehow she ended up in the future in Sonic's dimension. Which is never explained, but also Sonic 06 makes no fucking sense and there are so many inconsistencies and continuity errors in this game that I don't even fucking know what you're trying to do to try to explain this. And the whole thing at the end of the story where Blaze is supposed to be sent to the Soul Dimension, first of all, I don't even interpret that as what they mean when she says, seal me in a different dimension. The way that they talk about it, you know, sealing her away and then freezing time to keep her trapped there forever, to me that sounds more like, you know, trap her in like a pocket dimension, almost kind of like what happens to Ganon at the end of Ocarina of Time. I definitely did not interpret this to mean send me to like an alternate universe, and even if that's the case, that means that Silver was intending to freeze time in the Soul Dimension, which is a pretty villainous and shitty thing to do. So no, I don't think that's what was supposed to be happening here, but even still, that doesn't even make any sense because Sonic 06's events end up getting reset anyway. So how would Blaze even be in the Soul Dimension because she is originally apparently from Sonic's world, which would mean that she would just go back to being from Sonic's world as the events of the game that led her to go to the Soul Dimension would be erased. You could say that once she gets to the Soul Dimension, she is now immune from time as far as Sonic's world goes. But if that's the case, then how is Blaze a princess in the Soul Dimension? Because you don't just appear in a different dimension and now you are the princess. Royalty is something given to you at birth, as if it's supposed to imply that Blaze was always from the Soul Dimension. Because spoiler, she was. And then I've seen some people that try to explain this by saying that, oh, well, once Solaris resets the universe, it also resets the Soul Dimension, but because Blaze is there, then now she is also put into the Soul Dimension's history, and so now she is born there naturally in the new version of the universe. Which is a whole lot of shit that you are just making up to explain something that, in reality, the simple answer here is the developers of Sonic 06 were going, okay, so we got one sidekick for Silver in the form of Amy, but we want to have another character, and we want it to be someone that lives in the future with him that he can kind of talk to and be his voice of reason, so who's gonna be the character that we use for that? I guess we could make a new character for that, but oh, wait a minute, I just got a great idea. Blaze, she already has fire powers, and you know, we got the whole fire demon thing going on, it'll be perfect. And then someone else in the office goes, but isn't Blaze supposed to be from a different dimension? How's that supposed to make any sense? How are we going to justify Blaze now being in the future in this dimension? And then all the writers are scratching their heads, coming up with a way to try to make this make sense. And then someone in the office goes, Eureka, I've got it, I know the perfect explanation. 
we'll just ignore it. As I have said multiple times in many of my videos, Sonic Team just straight up does not give a fuck about these things, and they did not think about this that much. Blaze was just a cool new character that they wanted to throw in the game, and so they threw her in the game carelessly, just as carelessly as they throw Knuckles into the game with zero explanation of why he's not guarding the Master Emerald on Angel Island. And it's really shitty and unfortunate because, like, first of all, I think this is very disrespectful to just take someone else's character and just shove them into your thing, completely changing who they are as a character. Blaze's intention as a character is supposed to be that she is the alternate dimension version of Sonic. Period. Full stop. That is what she was envisioned as when she was created. I don't give a fuck if you can create some sort of backwards nonsense logic where you connect all these things together. That doesn't matter. At best, that just turns into a shitty retcon. The point of the character is that she is supposed to be Sonic's equivalent from another world. By changing that, by retconning that, by adding this new detail where, oh no, she's originally supposed to be from the future and she just went to the Soul Dimension, that is just changing what the character is supposed to be. And what a shitty thing to do to take someone else's character and overwrite what that character is. It's one thing to pick something up from a creator that's no longer working on a series, but they were probably working on Sonic Rush Adventure while Sonic 06 was in development and came out. They still were creating Blaze with this vision of her being from an alternate dimension. And now here comes Sonic 06 to steamroll over that with their new bullshit version of Blaze that they didn't even think about. Again, this is the kind of stuff that really frustrates me with the Sonic series. Like, is it that hard to just have a character be a thing and stick to that and not just ignore what that character is? It's like, oh, look, we have Blaze in Sonic 06, but really you don't. This isn't Blaze. This is just some other character with the same name and appearance and powers, but the actual characterization, Blaze is written completely differently in this game than how she is in Sonic Rush. So both character-wise in terms of her situation and who she's supposed to be, and the actual characterization of Blaze herself, both are completely wrong in Sonic 06, and so Blaze is not in Sonic 06, we just have this shitty replacement. And I find that especially shitty because nowadays Blaze and Silver are always associated together because of 06. Even though their story together in 06 fucking sucks, like fuck Silver and Blaze, that shit is garbage. Blaze and Cream is the real pair that we should be pushing. That is the actual pairing that Blaze's character was made with in mind, and it's also the story that actually matters and works and pays off effectively in a way where you actually sympathize and care about this relationship. Fucking Silver and Blaze, that shit is garbage. And when we get to Rivals, then I'm gonna have a very similar rant when it comes to Eggman Nega as well. But for the meantime, that's enough. So thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.